Hello traders, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Webull desktop screener in order to find stocks to trade every single day. Today's March 8th, 2022. This is Webull version 5.8, but this should apply to almost all the Webull versions because the screener has not changed very much over all of the versions. So let's take a look at my screener. I'm trading small cap stocks right now, so that's what I've named this, and my filters are as such. These are the only ones that I have selected, and I'll explain why I select so few in just a moment. Now, what you need to do first before you decide, okay, well, what type of uh, screener am I going to set up is what type of trader you want to be. You might not know that yet. The best place to go to find out some information on that is Investopedia. It's the Wikipedia for stocks, basically. So you can see here I have the um, small cap definition up, and it gives you all kinds of information on what small caps are and why you may or may not want to trade them. So these are the criteria that fit into the small cap stocks, a market capitalization of 300 million to $2 billion. And it explains what the key takeaways are with small cap stocks. Like they've historically outperformed large cap stocks, but are more volatile and riskier. So that volatility and risk is something that we're interested in as intraday traders, because we need stocks to move throughout the day in order to make money. If a stock is trading sideways or making very small moves each day, it's next to impossible to make money day trading those. Um, but for longer term investments, those may be of more interest. But you can see here, they make some nice comparisons between small and large cap, small versus mid cap. There's also ETFs, things like that, that you could look into. And there's pros and cons to trading all the different types of stocks. So you have to do a little homework and figure out which type of stock that you want to trade first. The appeal to small caps beside the, volatil the volatility and risk is that they're generally lower price. So if you're just starting out as a trader, you got a small account, and you want to see if some plan or strategy that you've come up with works. Small caps are a good place to start because they're cheap. Here's the prices right here. And you can start trading with one single share, which is what I recommend, and track your trades and then find out after 100 trades if you're profitable or not before you increase your share size. So now that we know the small cap definition, you can see how I've set up the market capitalization, 0.3 billion, that's the same thing as 300 million to $2 billion, so that meets the definition exactly. The price is five to $100, that's important. Why do I start at $5? Because anything below that is considered a penny stock, and those trade in an entirely different way than the stocks in the five to $100 range. The charts are much less predictable. It's much harder to uh, see the patterns or the way the patterns form is not expected. So I prefer to stay in the five to $100 range. I'll say the average price that I end up trading is probably in the 10 to $25 range. Uh, today we traded a stock that was uh, $5 and change. Occasionally we'll trade something 30, 40, maybe $50, very rarely over that. So here is uh, the key to making this easy to read is you click these three little horizontal dots and less is more. So you can see how I've deselected a lot of the options here on the screener. And this is all I have up. And even some of this is not that necessary. And I'll explain. So obviously we want to see the ticker symbol, the name, the volume. This is the most important thing on this list. So I organize the list by volume and I do so by clicking the volume tab until I see the down arrow highlighted. That means that we're going from the largest volume to the smallest volume. And I'm only interested in stocks on the first page because I wanna be where the volume is. We're intraday traders, we need volume, we need liquidity. Also volume is a good indication that whatever direction the stock is going, it may continue that direction. So if it's green, if the price is going up, if there's a lot of volume, it may be more likely to continue in that direction. It's not a guarantee. It doesn't mean just because you see number one volume stock up 30%, up 80% that you just jump in and hope for the best. That's not trading, um, but it's a place to start. Do not scroll down and look at the lower volume stocks. There's not a lot um, going on with those. I would highly suggest staying on the first page. There's going to be days, especially at the open, where a little bit later, where you pull this thing up and it's all red. And I would just stay away on days like that. You should have some criteria. For example, my criteria before I even pull a stock up on the chart page is I must see 500,000 shares or more traded at the open. That's at 930. This is accumulated volume that's growing throughout the day. So 
they all start at zero. And as soon as 930 hits, they start counting all the orders and everything goes up very quickly at the open. And it usually takes a few minutes for them to hit 500,000 shares or more. And then the uh, percent change, I'm looking for 5% or greater. That's my own criteria. You can do some research and try to come up with where you think is a good place to start. But if I don't see 5% change or more, then I'm not interested. And that's because small cap stocks can generate a lot of movement throughout the day. So if I don't see 5% or more near the market open, then that means there's just not going to be a lot of volatility that day. Therefore, no setups. Um, so anyway, that is how you use the screener. I think we went over everything else. Um, you could just put in this stuff manually. It's easier than using the sliders for those definitions. And once you have your criteria, just put whatever name you want here, click save, and that will save the screener for you. Then when you open up Webull every day, you'll go to my screeners. We were just looking at the small cap screener. Click these three little dots, click modify. That's an extremely important step. Otherwise your criteria will not be applied. And then organize the list by volume if you choose to um, use volume as one of your main criteria as I do. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. Let me know in the comment section below if there's anything that I missed or anything that you'd like to ask me about using the Webull stock, stock screener. I've I've been trading with Weevil almost for two years now, and I find it a great one-stop shop. Um, I use the screener, I use it for my trading, I use it for my charts, and I, it's really worked out great so far. So uh, let me know what your experience has been so far if you've been trading for Weeble, with Weeble for a long time. As always, I recommend all of my traders to go into every single trade with a plan. Speaking of plans, I do have a trading plan available for small cap stocks if you're interested on patreon.com slash trading armor. I'll leave a link into the, the description, no pressure, but I do suggest always trading with a plan, whether it's your own or someone else's. Ideally, it's your own plan, even if it's not necessarily good, it's a good idea to get in the habit of trading off a plan and developing the discipline of following that plan. After you've taken 100 trades of just one single share, you'll know a lot about whether that plan works or not. And if you're doing it right and only trading one single share, you'll be able to withstand 100 trades. And that's really important. Right now, if you're a new trader, you need a lot of data and you need to try to generate that yourself. So anyway, as always, go into every single trade with a plan, stick to that plan no matter what. Always take your stop losses, honor your profit targets, and in the long run, you should be green. Take care.